Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name's Cameron, and today we've got another episode of Scotch Sunday. In today's video, I'm gonna take a look at a bottle that at this point really needs no introduction. Tons of hype, tons of praise, rave reviews from what I understand. I am, of course, talking about the Port Charlotte 18-year-old single malt scotch whiskey coming to us from Brook Lottie. I do have the 10-year version in front of me as well, just in case I want to get into a comparison in this video. And I think what's so cool about this 18-year, besides the fact that we saw not only a Brook Lottie 18, but now the heavily peated version with this Port Charlotte, is that it's building on what we know and love from the 10-year version. This is nacho filtered, it's not colored, and it's bottled at a uh, hefty ABV, 50% ABV or 100 proof. And with this 18 year version, I'm gonna read the stats out so I don't get them wrong. I have notes in front of me here. This is uh, coming in at 54.3% ABV. So even, even more than the 50% here, this is 54.3, which is 108.6 proof. The cask breakdown for this is 74% refill sherry casks and 26% refill French oak wine casks. Now, I'm not exactly sure what kind of wine those French oak casks held, so if you happen to know that, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, let me know if you've had the chance to try this Port Charlotte 18. I would love to know what you guys think of it. I've kind of avoided reviews. I've heard positive things, but I've avoided getting into the weeds and actually watching or reading reviews because I want to form my own opinion in this video, and, uh, and we'll see how this goes. But at the end of the day, I'm just really excited about this. It's a little more expensive than maybe some people would, you know, think about for an 18-year-old scotch, but I guess in today's market, it's so variable at this point that the $180 to $200 price point on this bottle, it's about $10 a year, and when you're in that 18-year-old scotch category, sometimes $10 per year seems a little bit high, but with the proof, with the stats, the nacho filtered, the no coloring, I don't think you could really uh, complain that much about it. And considering the fact that it's not colored, the color of the whiskey itself, it's great. It's very good. You can see even this this comparison between the, the 10 year and the 18 year. The 18 year's dark. It looks like it's gonna smell and taste very good. So here we go on the nose. Let's see what we get. All right, so with this proof point, 54.3% ABV. I kind of expected this to hit me really hard on the nose, but the 18 years in the cask has mellowed this whiskey out substantially. You do still get, you know, a little bit of this peat influence on the nose, but this is considered a heavily peated scotch. I would say on the nose to me, it feels relaxed. There's just a little tinge of an edge to the peat, right? That barbecue, that slightly cigarette, uh, slightly smoked meat kind of peat that you get from this. It's still there. It still has just this little bit of an edge to it, but by and large, it's round, it's sweet, it's approachable. In some ways, it actually reminds me of a Springbank product just on the nose, I would say. Um, and, you know, some people might think I'm crazy for saying that. It doesn't have the Springbank funk, but it has the sweet peat kind of element that you sometimes get on Springbank products. But enough about the peat. Let's talk about more of these notes now. Yeah, overall, it's just, it's round and rich and sweet. I get a lot of butterscotch notes on this, which is interesting considering the refill sherry and the and the the French oak wine casks in the mix here. There's almost what feels to me to be kind of ex bourbon uh, that kind of a profile here. I get these butterscotch notes. I get these buttery croissant, toasty elements to it as well. Now there are certainly some fruit notes in here, and I think this is probably coming primarily from some of those you know those sherry casks where I'm getting this kind of golden raisin sensation on here. I'm getting almost a little bit of like a tart blackberry as well. And I guess the more I think about it, if if there is this kind of blackberry note that I'm getting, that's probably coming from some of those French oak, you know, X wine casks in the mix. But on the nose, I think this strikes a beautiful balance from sweet to peat to, uh, you know, kind of like savory, spicy. There's a little bit of this brininess that you would expect from a Port Charlotte. But to me, it's much more in the background. It's more rounded out. Uh, my wife, Sarah, told me that I have to say that there's a green olive note on here. So we're going to go with that. A little bit of this green olive brininess. And just sweet, mellow, round, rich oak notes. So by and large, <laughs> this is a, a stunning whiskey on the nose. Very relaxed, dense, rich, lush. These are all the kind of words that come to mind when I smell it. We'll go back in for another nose here in a second, but it's time to get this on the palate now. Cheers.
Wow. <laughs> Man. So this is uh, delicious. Let's start with let's start with the word delicious. The beginning of the palate for me actually is not the peat. The very first thing I get are those buttery croissant, butterscotch, golden raisin kind of notes. Like this hits me first, and then it leads into this peat. And the peat for me is more intense on the palate than it is on the nose. The nose feels very relaxed. The palate maintains some of that. I don't want to use the word incorrectly, but brash maybe is the word that comes to mind. There's a little bit of this, this brash, youthful peat that hits me, but very quickly that balances out, rounds out, and is overtaken by some of the sweeter you know, elements in the whiskey. I'm, I'm also getting on the palate some sort of um, some sort of powdered sugar donut, you know, confectioner sugar, this very vibrant, sweet, bright dessert kind of note as well. I'm, I'm really shocked actually at just how sweet the whiskey is. It's full enveloping, it's mouth coating, and the proof certainly helps in that regard. But first impression of this whiskey is that this is, for me, I would say this is like whiskey of the year material. Uh, I don't know if that's specific to scotch or if that's like all whiskeys that I've tasted this year. I'm not sure just yet, but this is definitely in the running. It's it's so good. <laughs> all the rumors are true and um, that's good and bad, I think. I think there's only 6,000 or so bottles of this floating around, but I, I'm i gonna own quite, quite a few of those, I think, uh, over the next couple of weeks. I might have to get my hands on uh, one or two more of these. Yeah, and as I go back to the nose, I think what's standing out for me just a little bit now that I've acclimated to some of those sweeter elements, some of those richer, more, you know, butterscotchy, toasty notes, I'm starting to get into a little bit of a black pepper kind of sensation and just a hint of some kind of um, maybe tropical fruit note is, is hitting me as well. But, you know, I'm splitting hairs at this point. Let's go back in for another sip now. Man, I tell you what, that is sensational. The front of the palate, it's all starting to come together for me now. The peat is kind of arriving at the same time as some of those flavor notes that I've talked about. It's getting a little bit more tangy, a little bit more sour. Maybe some more green apple is starting to show up now at this point. Wow, <laughs> it's just really special whiskey. I think the only complaint that I have about this whiskey is not really a complaint, uh, objectively speaking. It's more just for me personally, because I am relating this whiskey so much to Springbank, the, the the nose especially, but even somewhat on the palate, the the peat here being so barbecue forward, I'm, I almost wish that was dialed back just a smidge more because I like the fact that we are getting so much of a sweet element to the peat notes, but the barbecue is just a, just a little bit, you know, overzealous for me on the palate, 10%, I would say. That's the only complaint. It's such a small, subjective, stylistic thing, and I think it's because I'm associating this whiskey with Springbank in my mind. That could be a cool comparison to do at some point, but look, that's that's neither here nor there. I think this is phenomenal stuff. Very quickly, I'm going to take a, a look at this 10-year, just on the nose, quick palate, and see how this compares. Oh, yeah, okay. So the 10 year, which is a fantastic whiskey in its own right, comes off way more lemon forward, uh, very tangy, sour on the nose, bright, youthful, um, maybe even more vanilla on this one as well. Yeah, I think that's right. Like more of that powdered sugar note, but certainly like an acetone, almost, almost like a lemon scented fingernail polish remover. That's the kind of note that I get from the 10 year. And in the comparison, it's a very stark contrast, but when I just have the 10 year on its own, I love the stuff. So on the palate now. It's great on the palate. So well balanced. Easy sipping. Fantastic stuff. And interestingly, I think the barbecue notes are more prevalent to some degree on the 18 year, which I think is interesting. I wouldn't have expected that to be the case. Yeah, I think actually more of this like burnt ends savoriness is coming through on the 18 year than the 10 year. And I, I would not have seen that being the case. All right, one final sip now. 
Yeah, absolutely. That is the case. So fantastic stuff. If you like, you know, if you like any kind of peated whiskey, <laughs> this is going to be at the top of your list, in my opinion. If you see this bottle at 200 bucks, to me, it's an instant buy. I would pay over for it a little bit. I think up to 220 probably. I wouldn't hesitate at pulling the trigger on one of these. But to me, this is not only a buy, this is a back it up as well, especially if you find it around 180 to 200. I'd be buying two of these whiskeys. Given the numbers, 6,000 bottles or so released uh, from what I understand. You know, these aren't going to be all over the place. So if you if you get the opportunity to pick this up, if you like any kind of Laphroaig, Ardbeg, Lagavulin, Port Charlotte Tenure, this is going to be a whiskey that you're going to want to check out. Um, if you're if you're less inclined to enjoy peat, you know, or you want something that's that's very lightly peated or a little bit sweeter, this might not be for you because it does carry so much of that hefty barbecue kind of profile to it. But I'm going to have a hard time putting this bottle down. <laughs> and so that's why I'm going to be picking up a couple more. But thank you guys for checking out this review. Let me know if you've had the chance to try this Port Charlotte 18 year, what you think of it. Be very curious to know your thoughts and Brook Lottie 18, which I've already reviewed on the channel. But let me know what you think of that as well. I think this is the clear winner when I look at those two side by side. It, it's not even competitive. This Port Charlotte 18, phenomenal stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon. Cheers, guys. And I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams.